Good evening. Thank you for watching our briefing in English. In a landmark case, the Maltese courts described how the public broadcaster, also known as PBS, failed to maintain impartiality in its reporting. We speak with Graham Bencini. Thank you very much for coming to explain the situation with PBS. Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, the situation is as follows. Recently, we had a decision from the law courts, from the highest court in Malta, which was a decision on an appeal on a court case. We had already one um, where the Broadcasting Authority and the Public Broadcasting Services had appealed the original decision we won. And the decision we had won was with regards to political bias, which the Nationalist Party is constantly facing because the Public Broadcasting Services is constantly favoring the Labour Party at the expense of the Nationalist Party. So we opened the court case, we won the court case, the Broadcasting Authority and Public Broadcasting Services appealed the court case, and we won the appeal also, so much so that the judge um, awarded us even greater damages than what we won the first time. So this goes to confirm that what we have been saying all along is actually correct, that we are truly being victimized and suffering the consequences of the Labour Party in government whereby they have hijacked the national broadcasting station for the benefits of, uh, of their party, where the only purpose of the national broadcasting services nowadays is to push the propaganda of the government and not to educate or entertain the public as the public broadcasting station should be doing. And this is all being done uh, with the public finances. This is all being financed by the public and this is obviously something we are not going to accept, this is something we are not accepting and this is something we are going to constantly keep on fighting. From my end, since I shadow broadcasting services, I have um, submitted various parliamentary questions to the minister, Minister Owen Bonici. I've actually been uh, submitting certain questions for nine months now. And for nine months he's been uh, either dodging the questions, either giving me replies which have nothing to do with what I'm asking for, or else telling me he's going to give me the replies in a, another sitting. The sittings never come, the replies never come, so I have submitted them once again, and I'm going to continue submitting them until I get the replies I am after. Basically, the information I am, uh, I am looking for, I want, I'm wanting from the minister, is to do with the, Nash, with the directors of public broadcasting services, with the directors of the editorial board, as well as the annual reports, which the editorial board is meant to be preparing on an annual basis, which are then prepared to the board directors of public broadcasting services, which then prepared to the government. I want these reports, I'm not going to keep on insisting until I have them. Can you talk through some of these examples of impartiality? Yes, we had many instances where we had people uh, who were monitoring the, uh, the, the TV station, TVM, and we found that for every time uh, Bernard Grech, in this case, was, uh, was being aired, PBS was airing Roberts 10, 15 times or more. I don't have exact figures in hand, but there was such a clear political imbalance that it was obvious. In fact, even when we had some adverts, recently we had, it was about the budget, we had adverts about the budget, and uh, what PBS did was sandwich our adverts between two government adverts, which obviously nullified the effect of our adverts. We have various instances like this, we have various reports, various statistics, and this was also confirmed by the Constitutional Courts. In fact, as I explained earlier, we have won this case, which proves that what we're saying is correct. 
How does this uh, affect, what impact does it have on freedom of speech? It has a big impact uh, for the simple reason that in Malta we have the Labour Party TV stage, which is one TV, and it is followed by the hardcore um, Labour Party supporters. We have net television, which is generally followed by the more hardcore supporters that support the Nationalist Party. And then you have the public TV station, which is meant to be impartial. And this attracts a larger audience because not everyone enjoys watching um, TV stations which may be all um, politically oriented. Therefore, it has a bigger impact because when you have an audience which is meant to be watching an impartial station, it is being fed propagandistic material. When you have a, a party in government, like the Labour Party, which is using the TV station to push its own propaganda, this is giving people false information, which is obviously damning because damaging because it's affecting freedom of speech, it's affecting impartiality, which is ultimately what we need in our country. Uh, going forward, what are your expectations with regards to this case? Well, certainly we expect and we're going to insist uh, on uh, impartiality on the national TV station. As I have explained earlier, the TV station is funded by public funds, so it is not there to, uh, to push the government's propaganda. It is there to educate and to entertain people and to, and to enlighten them what's going on in the country without having a political bias from one side or the other. So this is something we are definitely going to insist on. We are not going to accept anything less. Now we have a court judgment which gives us a lot of weight and a lot of strength. And so this is something we are going to put to the forefront of our agenda, especially for me since I shadow public broadcasting services. What has been the reaction so far from the government and also the public broadcasting authority? Well, uh, a bit surreal actually, because uh, yesterday the minister, Owen Bonici, issued a statement saying he's going to analyse the court judgment, which goes hand in hand with what Robert Abela said about the judgment about the hospitals. They both, they both issued similar statements. So on the one hand, you have the Minister for Public Broadcasting telling us he's going to analyse the judgment given by court. And on the other hand, you have Robert Abel, the Prime Minister, telling us he's going to analyse the judgment given, given to us in regards to the victory uh, that Adrian Delea had in the court case on the hospitals. So as you can see, it's a pattern which we are used to now facing, the pattern that the government uses, and this is a bit uh, surreal now seeing the situation that we are facing in our country. You mentioned the Vitals case. Uh, both cases, I can say, are landmark cases. They're precedents. Do you think this is going to be the way forward with regards to the opposition? Yes, there are definitely landmark cases. I mean, when we see that 300 million of our funds, which were meant to be being invested in our three hospitals, and as we have seen, thanks to the net media crew and the other um, media outlets, when they visited the, the St. Luke's Hospital, that absolutely nothing was done, the place was left there to fall to bits. So this is definitely a landmark case, a landmark victory, which hopefully will spur us on to other victories. We have to remember that there are other magisterial inquiries going on, the magisterial inquiries which Simon Buzetil, when he was leader of the opposition, had opened himself. These are shortly going to be concluded. So together with the landmark case of the St. Luke's, uh, of the Vitals um, Hospital concession, following Stewart concession, which was won by Aidan Delia. The landmark case which we have just won um, against the PBS, and I have to mention the people who were instrumental in this case, which was my predecessor, Joe Ellis, there was David Ajus, there was Paul Bocelevier, Franz Demidemek and Michael Piccinino. All these people were instrumental to us winning the public broadcasting services case, and then we had the magisterial inquiry. So all these cases put together are showing all the population out there that what we have been saying has been the truth. We are going to continue on insisting on getting the truth and we're going to be doing so through all means, legal means, and this will include also the, the law courts. I know we came here to speak about broadcasting, but I can't help 
not mention the case of Jean-Paul Sofia, because you're speaking about magisterial inquiries. What are your views about the lack of attention that the mother of Jean-Paul is getting? I mean, first of all, it's a big tragedy to lose uh, your son, your daughter. is probably one of the worst things that any parent can go through. I'm a parent, so I can't even imagine going through what Jean-Paul Sofia's mother is going through. The simple fact that the Prime Minister does not want to carry out a public inquiry is telling and is worrying. Who is the Prime Minister protecting? Why doesn't he want to carry out a public inquiry? If anything was done incorrectly, then I believe the least that Jean-Paul Sophia's mother can do is have a right to know what went on, why her son was killed and who is to blame. And the simple fact that, that the Prime Minister Robert Abela is opposing this public inquiry to us is very worrying, which is why we have filed a, a motion in Parliament so that we can get this public inquiry, which we believe is the least that can be done for Jean-Paul Sofia's mother. We need to give her closure. This is a mother who has lost her child. But apart from closure, it's a case of health and safety for the public. Is it not normal in such circumstances to have an inquiry? Absolutely. I, I believe it should. It's the least thing should be done because besides being a health and safety case, we can potentially be, be speaking about a criminal case because if there was negligence, that can also be a criminal act in itself. So absolutely, this is something which has to be done. It's something we're going we're to keep on insisting on and we hope that ultimately good sense prevails. And uh, just something else that interests me, is it normal that a Prime Minister of a country uh, decides whether there should be a magisterial inquiry or not? Well, uh, unfortunately, we are not living in a normal country, because if we were living in a normal country, uh, certain people would not be roaming our streets. It is not normal, nor the prime, that a, a prime minister has to decide on whether to carry out a magisterial inquiry or not. It is not normal to have people to have been found guilty of high level of corruption to be, re to be roaming the streets as though nothing has ever happened. It is not normal to have 300 million of our taxpayers' money to be invested in a, in a scam, in a scandal, in a, in, in a hospital deal which never materialized. So no, these things are normal, and no, it's absolutely not normal to have a Prime Minister having to give the nod to whether or not a public inquiry has to ensue. Thank you very much for sharing that with me. Coming back to broadcasting, what about censorship? Well, we've had various cases where the public broadcasting services have censored some stories. I'll give you some examples. When the Pope Francis um, came to Malta, he had, uh, he had given a speech. And in his speech, he had focused part of his speech on the importance that our country fights corruption. Obviously, this was reported by all major media outlets in Malta, except for public broadcasting, for our TVM station. It was censored because the government does not want us to speak about the imports of fighting corruption. The government wants us to think there's no corruption. And in fact, this leads to another issue which was censored. A few weeks ago, there was a, an international report which, which was about the CPI, the Corruption Perception Index. It's an international report. And this report showed that our country, Malta, went down to the lowest level it was ever on this index of corruption. Corruption percentage index. Two of the reasons it gave was because uh, we have a state, uh, a culture of impunity in our country where high level cases of corruption are not being investigated. And the second reason they gave was because our national broadcasting station is totally hijacked by the government where the editorial content is censored and determined by the government. Sure enough, even this story was censored, so much so. I had to lodge an official complaint in my role as a, a spokesperson for public broadcasting services on behalf of the opposition with the broadcasting authority. The following day they issued a, a kind of story which did not even tell the truth. Even the second day 
the truth was not told because they made it seem as though we have been in this position for 10 years or in actual fact we keep on getting worse year on year so as you can see we are facing constant censorship when there are stories which put the government in a bad light which is why we are going to keep on insisting for impartiality on the, on the, on the public broadcasting services and on the broadcasting authority. As Shadow Minister for Broadcasting, how do you plan to overcome these challenges in the future? Well, we have, uh, it's not easy. We are facing big challenges because of the big majority the government has in Parliament. They can do whatever they want because they're going to win in Parliament. They also abuse of their position. They pass anti-democratic laws, as we have seen for the Commission of Standards. They abuse of their, of their authority in public broadcasting services. They abuse of their authority throughout the old institutions. So from our end, although we are fighting a very difficult battle, we're going to keep on fighting it by all means, in Parliament, in courts, in every means possible. And we are obviously reserving our right to take any further action as need, as, as need may arise. for watching our briefing in English where we spoke with Graham Bencini about the landmark case where the Maltese courts said that the public broadcaster known as PBS failed to maintain impartiality in its reporting. Should you have any comments, please send them by WhatsApp on the number that appears on the screen. I'm Leah Hogg for NET TV.